What's up guys, Nepenthes here and welcome back to another episode of The Road to Glory. Today guys, we sign ourselves Team of the Year, Kylian Mbappe. Uh, before we get into that, here's some of the stuff that sold off the trade pile. We've got a lot to talk about today, but we're going to go live very briefly for a few minutes whilst we pick up Mbappe and put him in the team and then we'll be back with some gameplay. So I will be right back. All right, guys, so I've sold a whole bunch of stuff. And here, unless somebody's just cheesed me out of this right now, that is it. We have purchased Team of the Year Mbappe to go with our Thierry Henry. Um, I'm so happy to have this card in the club. I, I still have a lot of stuff in the club. Uh, we've got obviously 5Ks worth of coins now, which isn't much. Maybe a little bit more. I think something might have just sold. Um, I sold just a whole, basically everything that I'd been saving up. I still have some really good things in the club as well. Um, but uh, after fitness cards and other consumables and other items in the club I still have somewhere around 2 million coins I just got to get there now you know now that we started the process of just gutting everything I'm just going to continue this process so that we can hopefully pick up um, team of the year Mbappe no sorry team of the year Marcelo and team of the year Ramos as quick as possible um, this is what the team is looking like right now. Obviously, we've got that Thierry Henry in there. Of course, for me, with Mbappe, uh, we only have him on five. We're going to get the French manager in. So what do I need here? I need a just a, like a French MLS manager. Oh, no, he's already fine. I just need. Do I just need a French manager? Yeah, that's it, isn't it? Yeah, just a French manager is fine. Um, that will get everybody onto max chemistry, I believe. So Mbappe on six, everybody else on 10. We've got Courtois in goal. Um, so we got rid of David De Gea, the Alonso David Luiz links. Now, the, the defense is definitely the, the weak point in this team right now. Mbappe currently on six chemistry, of course. Once we get that um, seventh chem point, he'll get a few more uh, stats added to him as well. But this card is just exemplary. You know, he's absolutely exemplary. So the way we're going to set up in game, I think, a little change around. And, and I'm going to be testing a lot of things uh, to try and figure out exactly what I want from this team. Um, I don't want to be that depth, that's for sure. Uh, we're going to be 4-2-3-1. We're going to have Mbappe. Where am I going to have Mbappe? Mb wow. I didn't think I was getting Mbappe here today. I thought I was going to be keeping uh, the attack as it was. Do I put Mbappe as my central camp? I don't even know. Stream, what do you reckon? Do I play it like that? No, Mbappe's got to go... He's got to go on one of the wings. He's got to go on the... Uh, on the maybe we play Ibra at Cam or Henri at Cam or Bale at Cam. Bale at Cam, Ibra Central. I, I, I tested with Ibra Central and I can always sub on Neymar if Ibrahimovic isn't working out. Um, but yeah, I think that's what we're going to set up with Mbappe, Henri, and Bale up front. Ibrahimovic just in behind, Balak and Kante right there. Um, I'll experiment with how these four interact. I, I'll get a feel for who plays better where throughout the course of the. Um, throughout the course of the game and hopefully uh, we'll, we'll do bits. So that is how the team's going to line up, guys. And it's now time to get into some gameplay on the no longer first owner road to glory. All right, guys. So there we go. Mbappe is in the squad and we are now playing champs. And, and just before I get into the comments, um, I want to discuss a little bit about my mindset here. I, I know full well I haven't played champs to 30 games since before Christmas, which is over three months now. And I haven't played rivals really at all um, for the last three months. And I've only really been playing draft and then champs to 14 wins. And, and what that means is for the last three months, I haven't played any high level competitive FIFA unless I've matched up against a random person that was really good in champs or in draft. And why that's important is, is because as good as I start doing through the first 14, 15 games, I know that once I hit that high form and once I start coming up against consistently good players, it's going to be a wake up call for me. So regardless of how good I start in this video, because we do really well in this video, I'm, I'm not expecting miracles week one and I, I if for those of you that follow me on social media you'll know where i'm at after the first 21 games um today's episode takes us up to game 14 or 15 i think um and just just you know in general it's not going to be an overnight switch of me just being elite level at fifa you know hopefully gold one will be the the minimum target of where i get to 
and then playing to this high level each week and now playing in Division 1 rivals again, specifically because of the objectives this week, will hopefully get me to a point where I'm used to playing against these level of fee- level, you know, this player of FIFA, this level of player. Um, but regardless of kind of anything, the reason why it's important and the reason why I'm kind of explaining to you guys that um, not to expect miracles and such is because it is a different style of FIFA once you get to a high level of FIFA. They're, like... I might lose a couple of games here or there against players that are goal two or goal three standard, but the style of FIFA is just way different to when you get to elite level of players. They they just spam and spam and spam the overpowered maneuvers, whereas against lower level players, they might use the maneuvers here or there, but they don't spam them. And so it's more easy to manage and control. And so I need to play a lot at a high level to, to get my brain and my, my reactions and my interpretation of the game back to a point where I'm expecting high levels of spamming mechanics rather than chasing my tail whilst people are doing it. So for me, um, I, I just want you guys to A, not get ahead of steam when you see how well my results going here and B to to just hopefully and for most of you guys you will but hopefully understand and respect the fact that I'm playing 30 champs games this weekend not to try and get elite per se but just because I've got Henri and Mbappe now and I just want to play FIFA I don't care if I win or lose um, I've actually been uh, thinking about changing up my formation I want to experiment with some new formations and, and I'm going into the, the the weekend league now with a mindset of I'm not chasing elite, right? I'm not going to play my games at the best times of day. I'm not going to structure my games to give me the best opportunity of avoiding high-end players. I'm not going to play home-only games. And you'll see here today, I've got some away games. I think this game's an away game, actually. Um, I've got some away games, some home games. I'm not going to try and circumvent the difficulty levels I'm just going to play uh, and because that's what I want to do. That's how I want to enjoy this game. And, and once I start concentrating on, oh, I need to get elite. I need to get elite because they're going to they're going to say he's not good enough for elite. I told you so. Uh, like once I start falling into that kind of sinkhole, I'm going to start getting frustrated at FIFA again. I'm going to start getting angry. I'm going to start wanting to not play. I'm going to start playing to 14 wins again. And I don't want that to happen. I want us to go into team of the season and have a good club with lots of players to experiment with and to just get what we get, you know, and and that's it. We just get what we get, we get where we get and go from there. Hopefully along the way, because I know that I have the capabilities to get myself into Elite 2 and Elite 3 every week because I've done it previously, um, hopefully along the way I will just pick up the nuances and the little game mechanics that will make me a better player and hopefully we'll just start achieving Elite naturally instead of really like forcing it home. So yeah, hopefully you guys could just uh, understand that probably for the for the first couple of weeks of playing 30 games of champs again, at the very least, I probably won't get the uh, Elite 3. Hopefully I will. I mean, you know, maybe I'm wrong in my own uh, estimations of my, my skill level and, and whatnot. But yeah, I'm, I'm not going to try and, like I say, I, I don't know, maybe I would have already got closer to Elite 3 this week if I had played home only and if I had structured my games better and if I had waited to play a game but what I've been doing this week this uh this weekend in general is I have not been getting frustrated at this game at all and that's I'm again even if it costs me results I'm really trying to put my mindset to a place where it doesn't matter because it doesn't matter yeah sure if I get a leap maybe through team of the season it matters if they change the inform pack to team of the season pack but right now gold one is arguably better than top than, than elite three because of the extra 100k pack which could potentially be more valuable um but anyway that that's where we're at with that obviously the i'm gonna push on and try to win every game i'm not sitting here saying i'm gonna just throw games or anything but um yeah hopefully you guys can just not put the pressure on me that i already used to put on myself and used to take from the chat and from the streams and stuff and just uh, accept the fact that for a couple of weeks, I'm just going to suck at a high level. You know, okay, I'll be able to, like, one thing that this team has allowed me to do with Henri and Mbappe put into the team is it has allowed me, you know, like those games where sometimes I lose them and I'm like, damn, I really should have won that game. I won all of those games this time around. Like I said, I think at the end of this video, I think we got to 14 and 1. Uh, the game that I lost, I thoroughly deserved to lose. He beat me 2 0. He scored a, an early goal in the first half. We played out a tough game and then I went really attacking late in the game and he scored a 93rd minute goal to make it 2-0. But I, I deserve to lose that and, and I'm okay with that, you know. And so I hope you guys can just 
let me suck at the game for a couple of weeks whilst I'm trying to figure it out again and whilst I'm trying to get up to that high level. And um, we'll, we'll go from there in spite of how good my team is. And, and funnily enough, I had a guy tweet me because he's been following me on Twitter and uh, I haven't even finished all my games, not even close. And he was just giving me abuse for having the team that I have and that I lost the game with it. But I, I hope this makes some people realize that team isn't everything um, because it, it's more about understanding the game mechanics and then structuring your team around how well you abuse those and so that's where we're at with that anyway comments Sodi says why not get the left wing and Bappe and FFS Mendy keep Bale at right mid and everyone is on Kem once you get Ramos yeah I have considered that uh, what I want to do next and I'm nearly there is I want to get Cristiano Ronaldo I was going to get Team of the Year Marcelo Team of the Year Ramos but I want to get Cristiano Ronaldo he's about 1.5 million on PlayStation 1.2 on Xbox and that sucks because I'm, I'm at about a million coins right now and I've got the coins in the club to get them. I'm selling off the fitness cards still. And I'll start selling and discarding gold cards to get up to Cristiano Ronaldo. But I want to get CR7. And obviously, I could sell Team of the Year Mbappe. I could get 91 left wing Mbappe. And then I could go and get regular Ronaldo and Team of the Year Ramos and Team of the Year Marcelo. I could buy all four of those by selling Mbappe with what I have available in my club right now. And... and, and it's fair to say that one card is not worth the value of four high-end cards like that. And I think maybe I've played with Team of the Year Mbappe. I love that card. It is just a truly brilliant card. The, the difference is, is I know that the Team of the Year cards are super, super high-end. And that Team of the Year Mbappe, he has so much more physical than the 91 Mbappe that I don't know how much enjoyment i'll get out of the not team of the year mbappe you know um it's a weird one because i would love to have ronaldo in my club for the last seven or eight games that i've got left but first of all the tax that i will lose on mbappe we're looking at like two hundred thousand coins tax and then you know picking up obviously uh marcelo and ramos ronaldo and 91 mbappe it will be big additions to the squad, massive additions to the squad in, in many regards. Um, but for me, I want to enjoy the game. And I, I personally think I'll enjoy the game more with Team of the Year Mbappe, Ronaldo, Henri and Team of the Year Bale as my attack. And then working on Ramos and Marcelo next uh you know that that's kind of uh my my opinion on that eduardo says getting rid of the 86 lala to then buy his headliner for a plus one like you said you would yesterday sounds like a dumb idea bro hey you're entitled to your opinion dude um that 86 lala was important because he was an untrade win form that i haven't used and the 87 lala is a a little bit better b not even that expensive he's like 230k and c a live item and so if he gets another upgrade or two obviously he'll become even better and he'll be more expensive so i'll be able to sell him for a profit um but it's it you know if i wanted to use the mediocre players and the mid-level players and stuff i wouldn't have switched away from a first owner road to glory i would have stayed the first owner and just dealt with me my team falling behind the curve until team of the season i didn't want to do that i want to i want to play with the best of the best Something that was actually suggested to me is that potentially I should buy um, Fat Birthday Marcelo and play him at right back. Um, you know, obviously he would make a really good right back there. We'd have then Alonso, Marcelo, Ramos and uh, David Luiz. And David Luiz is good. And one of the reasons why I'm, you know, become more reluctant to um, improve Alonso and David Luiz is because David Luiz is a high-end centre-back. And Alonso, other than his agility and balance is a is a world-class left back in this game you know he's got high high work rates he's nice and tall he's nice and strong he's got really well-rounded stats and he's just an absolute machine so getting Marcelo and Ramos wouldn't necessarily be a, a true upgrade but at the same time um, I definitely do want them and, and when we when we do look at the prices of them Marcelo is a million Ramos is two million um, the Kylian Mbappe um, left wing is let me have a look the 91 Kylian Mbappe is 1.3 million. So that takes me to 3.3 million. I have a million in the club and I could sell Team of the Year Mbappe for 3.8 million. So I would be able to get the two Team of the Years, the 91 Mbappe and Cristiano Ronaldo. And that is a that is definitely a prospect that I, I sit here and I think, oh, that would be quite nice. The, the good thing about the 91 left wing Mbappe is that with the Marksman Chem style or the Maestro Chem style, with the Maestro Chem style, he becomes a 97 rated left forward. He just doesn't quite have the the physicals of the team of the year Mbappe. In terms of their, their stats, 
with the marksman. He has 99 pace the same, 98 dribbling the same. He has four less shooting than the team of the year Mbappe and three less passing. But at that level, it's not too important. He has 12 less defending, which isn't really that important. But then he has 13 less uh, stamina. And that, for me, is like, I suppose we ask the question, is it worth two and a half million coins? Which, with those coins, obviously, we could do just a whole bunch more, a whole bunch more. Um, maybe I wouldn't even be able to get, have I like overpriced myself? If we sold for 3.8, we'd get 2.5 the difference, plus the million that I've got. Ramos and Marcelo, I would actually be short on Ronaldo by a million coins if I went and got that 91 Mbappe, unless I got Mbappe and not uh, not Ramos or Marcelo. I don't know. Um, anyway, next comment is from Carl. says, now do a club tour of what is left. Yeah, we could do that. Probably not this, well, definitely not this episode because I've already built this episode. Um, maybe the next episode, but probably not. We'll see how it goes. Maybe the one after that we'll do a club tour. But my club is getting emptier and emptier as the days go on. Um, Jason says, the amount of money you've wasted on SBCs throughout the year because of the pack only road to glory is unreal. I remember the last two years you saying you wouldn't waste money on random SBCs again and it just keeps happening. Please remember that for the next year, LMAO. And uh, my man Dej says, first three teams cost net nothing, he says, yet flashbacks, etc. about 100k plus that you spent on them and special cards, etc. You spent more than you think. When I say they didn't cost me anything, I understand what sunk cost is and opportunity cost is and I understand they have those values. But I was more talking about the fact that they, they literally didn't cost me any coins. Like I didn't have to go to the market to purchase players because that was important for me whilst building Henri that I didn't waste any of my coins um, whilst doing that. Um, in terms of the SBCs, because of the first owner road to glory, yeah, we spent a lot. And when you see how many SBCs I, would, I dumped into the Thierry Henry and when, you know, like my man Dej says, when you calculate the value, the cost of what they were... I do sit here and I think, imagine my team if I wasn't a first owner road to glory from scratch. Now, I might have done things different. And because of the butterfly effect, maybe we would be in a worse place. Maybe we'd be in the same place, maybe a much better place. But if we just take the millions of coins that I've wasted, we could have Team Media De Bruyne, Cristiano Ronaldo, Team Media Modric, Team Media Ramos in our team, and probably even Team of the Year De Gea. And my team would be like six or seven Team of the Years, plus Cristiano Ronaldo, Team of the Year Bale, and you know Kante and Balak and stuff and it would just be mental and so um for next year uh because the last comment we've got today is from um oh no I didn't bring that comment up but for next year I, I don't know I don't know where I want to go or how I want to handle the road to glory um it's that have to be for another day because we're running out of time here but the last comment is from Campbell Goring he says hey Nep, I was just wondering what lengths do you think EA will go to with team of the season I think it's a perfect opportunity to do weekly objectives for another team of the season that fans voted but where the best chance is to change champs to rules for team of the season reds or something along those lines. This will bring players back to the weekend league, plus them playing objectives on top. With all this people want to do, they will spend more money to add players to their team. I agree with that. I think it's just an opportunity for EA to make a fun promo that suits every time a player. Keep up the content from Australia, Campbell. Thank you, man. I appreciate the kind words. What, what's worrying is Foot Birthday has descended into a promo that people are slowly hating extremely overpriced SBCs for Foot Birthday cards and flashback cards for really low level cards. Uh, some high-level cards, but generally low-level. Um, extremely overpriced Prime Icon Moment SBCs that aren't the best Prime Icon Moment SBCs. And then they're not really releasing the best Prime Icon Moment SBCs. Weekly objectives that they've now put into Fut Rivals. And for people that specifically that are in the high level of Fut Rivals, it's near impossible to get these objectives done in a timely fashion. And doing objectives in Rivals anyway is just a struggle and a stress and frustrating as hell. Um... And and because of how many SBCs they're released and the price of them for again for players that are just kind of not exactly super high level, um, I'm worried for team of the season that the EA are just going to keep giving these really expensive, uh, you know, options that don't really live up to the standard of what we currently have, and that it's going to be another bomb promo. So I don't know. I, I hope EA have got something fun planned for team of the season. Because if it's just another reskin of Fuck Birthday or Carnival or, you know, anything like that, it's going to be a promo where people are very disengaged. But anyway, guys, 14-1 uh, and one after our first 15 games. This is going to be the end of the video. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, be sure to leave a like, rating, comment, and subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. But for now, guys, I'm out. Peace.